here I go again. I got, I got the Noakes pickers and, and Jordan. I won't quit till I get to Montana. How is everybody? Y'all good? Well, there's my wife hiding in the back. Hi. I text you. All right, it's good to be here, isn't it? God gave us a good day. And uh, I've dropped the last three bullets off my sermon, so we'll get there in a little while. Y'all say amen. <laughs> All right. All right. We're not going to do it right at the moment, but you can turn over to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. That's good picking too, guys. Man, y'all were right on. Makes you want to preach. A lot of people don't really enjoy life. A lot of people just go week to week or day to day. It just seems like they endure life. They put up with a lot. They don't really have a sense of joy. Some people have happiness, but they don't have joy. You know, happiness is really comes around because of what's around us. People just endure what they have. I know y'all are happy today, but I know a lot of you have real joy. We have real joy today. Miss Maynell and Brother Joe's back with us today. You brought Brother Joe with you today, didn't you? I'm glad. We're glad, and some of the family's with you, and we're glad y'all are with, uh, with us today. If you're visiting today, we want you to come back. A lot of people have no happiness and many people have no joy. And, you know, a lot of people have dreams. They say, well, if only, if I only had this or if I only had that, then I'll be happy, they say. If I get the right job or if I find the right person to marry, if I find the right spouse, if I could only win the lottery, that's what people say. They wish their life away. If I only had this. You know, happiness is really dependent, as I said, of what goes on around you. We ought not worry about that. It's fine to be happy, but we ought to worry about joy. Because joy is on the inside, and what's on the inside excuse me, comes from above. We like to find ourselves in good situations. It's good to be in a good situation. But happiness is just external. I want to talk about the things that are internal. Joy is internal. And true joy is not based on circumstances. I want to look at one verse. You don't have to turn there, but the fellows in the back will put it on the page for us. Philippians 4 and verse 7. It says this, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, also when Jesus was in the upper room and He was preparing His disciples, He was about to leave them. And He was trying to get them ready for it. He was trying to tell them, I'm going to go and I'm going to leave you here. Over in John 14 and 27, He says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus gives us peace, Christian. He gives it to us at salvation. It's not gold or silver. It's not anything of the world. It's of Him. Now that's rich. That's rich. And we all need this peace. We all need it. If we're in a storm right now, if we have troubles in life, we need this peace. You might say, well, I'm fine, Pastor. I'm doing good right now. <laughs> hey, you're human too. You just hang in there. If you're not going through a storm of life right now, you're going to go through one. That's just facts. There's one coming and you're going to need His peace. And this peace has been tested in all kinds of storms. It's been tested in war. It's 
It's been tested at the valley of the shadow of death. This peace is tried and true. Jesus himself tested it. It's his peace. He says, my peace I give to you. What a gift. What a gift. It's this very peace that Christ gives to us no matter how tough the trials that you have. No matter how dark the hour becomes, no matter how difficult the trouble, no matter how deep the valley is that you are in or that you're coming out of, no matter what you're up against, this peace is out of this world. It's not of this world. It's Christ's very own peace. It, it belongs to Him, but He gives it to you. What a legacy that He bestows upon us. And it's given to us, as I said, at salvation. This peace that Jesus gives to us, it's not temporary. It's not on loan. He gives it to us. Forever. It's lasting. This peace is not shallow. It, it goes deep into our soul. And we use it for troubled times. And for the storms of life. And that's what I want to talk about today. You could say that it's an inside job. The peace that Jesus gives us is, is not conditional on anything for the Christian. It's unconditional. It's like His love. But in order to have this peace, you must be a Christian. You must be a believer. And an example of this real peace is found in our reading today from Matthew chapter 14 and verse 22. And if you're able to stand in honor and reverence to God's infallible, inerrant word, please do that today. Beginning with verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. And they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Genesaret. And we'll pause there this morning with the reading of God's word. Would you please bow with me today? Our Father, we're so thankful for today. We're thankful that we can come into this place and we can look into your word and we can praise your name in song. We're thankful that we can gather together and have fellowship one with another, but we can also come and we can worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, I pray today that I would step aside, that I would get myself out of the way, and that I would allow you to speak forth in this message, Father. That the Holy Spirit would put the words in my mind and in my mouth. That I might speak clearly the truths of this passage. Father, show us what you have for us. I know, Father, that we have troubles. We have things going on in our lives. We, 
We need to look to you and we look to you for that peace and for that comfort. Father, I praise you today for salvation. I praise you for your son and it's in his name. I pray these things. Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated this morning. First of all, I, I have a question for you. And, and this question goes to you Christians. And it, it is a, something that we would do. Maybe would be take a tally of our own heart. Let me ask you today, how is your peace? How is your peace today? And we'll glance back at a couple of verses where we started just a few moments ago. Because Jesus says to his disciples there. Get into that ship, in verse 22, and go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away, verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. You know what I like about Scripture is that the, the writers and the Holy Spirit always lets us know that Jesus was a praying individual. He prayed, didn't he? So he gets away from the crowd. He gets away from the crowd and he goes and he spends time in prayer with the Father. Now, did the Lord know that this storm was coming? Did the Lord know that this storm was going to blow in the middle of the night? Yes, he did. He knew very well that it was going to blow. He, knew, he knows everything. He knows the storm is in your life. And the Lord sent them into the storm, knowing that it was going to happen. He sent them into the storm. You don't have to be backslidden. You don't have to be apart from God for a storm to come into your life. You don't have to be uh, walking out of the will of God for a storm to come into your life. You don't have to be out here uh, in trouble, out here on the edges of the law for God's will to come and to allow trouble to come. Now I wonder how is your peace in the middle of the storm of life? God's word says that the disciples did what Jesus told them to do. And they got in that boat and not knowing what was going to happen. They didn't know the future. Not knowing what was going to happen. They headed to the other side of the sea. And Jesus went to the mountain to pray. And I want you to know something today. And Keep this in mind. Although that Jesus was on the mountain, he may have been away from them. He knew exactly what was going on. He knew exactly where they were. He knew when the storm began to blow. He knew where they were at every moment. Jesus knew how strong the winds were. Jesus knew their thoughts of fear. Jesus knew things while he was praying to the Father. He had his disciples on his mind. And I want to say this also. In your storm, in your troubles, in your sickness, or in your financial despair, God knows, Jesus knows exactly where you are. It seems like the storms are strong sometimes. Problems are rough. Sometimes we're tempted to say, well, God doesn't know what's going on. Sometimes we feel like we're out here by ourselves. Sometimes we feel like God may have abandoned us. I want to tell you something. It doesn't matter if there are troubles all around you. The Lord still knows where you are. The Lord knows where you are and what you're going through. And if you'll just keep that in mind today, God knows what I'm going through. He knows uh, when Satan is bothering you. He knows when Satan is trying to bring things against you and against me. He knows what's happening deep down in your soul right this very moment. He knows what's in your mind before you do. Can you all think about that a moment? God already knew it. Hey. Hello. So he knows all of these things. And so the Lord is always looking and he's always faithful to us, is he not? I wonder today, have maybe we forgotten that peace? Sometimes do we forget that peace? Sometimes do we kind of bypass and say, oh, I'm in trouble. Have we forgotten that peace that he's given to us? He gave it to us at salvation. 
Christian? Do we get all tore up in the storm and, and we forget the faith and the, the confidence that we should have in the Lord? He's going to see us through the storm. Have we forgotten just how big God is? So there they are. And I want us to really get this this morning. They are in God's perfect will. They're doing what Jesus asked them to do. And our second point this morning, don't forget the victory. And something I need to let you know is that the previous day, or the day that Jesus asked them to get into that boat, previous to that, and they did what Jesus said, so there they were, they're in the center of God's divine will, and the storm blows up, but I want us to understand this. They were living a clean life, they were doing right. They had been with Jesus when He had fed the multitude. They had seen this miraculous thing happen. They had seen this victory. Now, what I want us to see is that although that, that you may be in the center of God's will, you're living right, you're living a clean and a righteous life, and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and you and I uh, will still face trials. You know, it seems like sometimes when things are really going good, you know who comes knocking at the door? Oh, Satan. When things are going good, Satan says, I'm going to go throw something in that fan over there. Now, 1 Peter 4 and 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Verse 13 says, But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. He said, don't think it's strange when the devil comes and he comes to attack you, he comes against you. People say, well, I've been having a lot of trouble lately. I guess I've drifted away from God. I guess I've become backslidden. Not necessarily. You're going to be tempted and tried. You're going to have it hard sometimes. He said, knowing that you're going to be, but rejoice in it as much as you are partakers in Christ's sufferings. Because he was tried and he was tempted, was he not? So are we. So now here we are. The disciples are in that boat and they're going across the sea and the Bible says an unexpected storm blew up. Isn't that the worst kind of storm? The unexpected kind? That's the worst kind. One that you don't know that's coming, and one that you don't know that's blowing in from the wrong direction. One that blindsides you. They're in the boat. Jesus is away. He's on the mountain praying, and it's in between 3 and 6 a.m. in the morning, the darkest part of the night. Over in John's Gospel, it says a great wind blew. Sometimes we're more vulnerable to Satan than we are at other times. After spiritual victories, after revival... I wonder why that is. Because the devil don't want you hanging around victory very long, you see. If you've had a victory in your life, the devil wants to run you down. After you've been blessed. After you've recovered from an illness. When your sickness has passed. When you're back on top. The old devil will come knocking. When God's really touched you. Maybe you've had your own personal revival. And here he comes. Here he comes. Or after you've been to worship on Sunday. Falls apart on Monday. Maybe that's why they call it Blue Monday. I don't know. 
rainy days and Mondays. The devil will throw problems your way. The car needs a transmission. <laughs> or the boss is mad at me for some reason. Maybe because it's Monday. Or maybe because I had a victory yesterday. And the devil's doing it. You know, God says don't forget the victory. Don't forget the victory. You may be going through a storm. But don't forget the victory. Here are the disciples. They're out in the boat in the storm. And the Bible says over in Mark about this same report here, the same story. Mark 6 and verse 52. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. It happened earlier that day or the previous day. And they were so quick to forget what Jesus had done. The storm had taken their memory of this victory. They had forgotten that they'd been involved in that miracle. God said you had a victory yesterday. You had a victory yesterday. You're going to have the victory today. What changed? God didn't change. Just hold on. The storm winds are blowing strong. The wind is against them. The waves are against them. And what's the word say? They were afraid. We get afraid, don't we? When problems like that happen, I find myself saying, I wish I was back in revival. I wish I was in a revival meeting somewhere. You ever think like that? Someone might say, I wish I was at church, or I wish the pastor would come by, or I wish, I, I wish my friend John would call me on the phone. Man, he knows exactly what to say at the right time. He always knows what to say. It's easy to have victory when everything's going good, isn't it? But it's... Really easy to forget that victory if the storm's bad. But God says, I want you to see what you're really made of. Y'all hear me? It's time to see if you're living off of somebody else's testimony. I want you to go through this storm. We know God knew it was coming. Jesus knew the storm was coming. He allowed the storm in their life. He allowed it for a reason. You had a victory yesterday, but this storm came today. Christian, do you really have what you say you got? Do we have this peace? Do we have the faith? Do, the Lord wants our commitment, not just lip service. Many people sound good and they say what, what he wants to hear. But can you back it up with action? So the Lord puts us to the test many times. And he put the disciples to the test right here. Now I'm going to pause the sermon for just a moment and let y'all know that I'm running about 15 minutes ahead of time. And y'all going to get a burger pretty early today. Amen. Let me hear an amen out of that. Hey. Thirdly this morning. Thirdly. In the middle of the storm. In the middle of the storm. Now, the Sea of Galilee, and I just recently read, it's about eight miles across. And they're right in the middle of the sea. Did y'all notice in verse 24? Look at verse 24. When the storm hit them, it says, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Right in the middle of the sea... Right in the middle of the storm, it was just as far to turn around and go back as it would be to continue on. What's the Lord trying to tell them? What's the Lord trying to tell us? We get into a storm of life, do we want to turn around and run? No, He's trying to tell us you might as well go forward. It doesn't take any more effort to go forward than it does to turn around and go back. Too often I think we back up or we cower down and, and we don't stand our ground. 
and we lose ground or maybe we even backslide. But God is saying, you might as well press on. You might as well go on with it. Get through this storm. They were panicking. They were afraid. And they forgot that Jesus was headed their way. He told them He was coming. They forgot that He was headed their way. Did you know that He's headed your way? Did you know He's never far away? Did you know that He's always near? Whatever you're facing, the Lord is right here. Whatever you're facing, He's right here, folks. He's not somewhere off up in the sky. He's not off somewhere past Saturn. So many people in the world, won't you say, oh, you've got some long-haired, bearded God out there somewhere in the sky. No, we don't. My God's with me. How about you? He resides with us. They forgot about Jesus. And I think sometimes in our hustle and bustle of life, we do too. And we need to understand that there are some storms that are strong and heavy. That no amount of whatever we do of our own can we get through them. And we need Jesus to help us. There are problems that only God can solve. And some of us, we wear ourselves out trying to fix things. And we don't reach out to God and just say, help me. How in the world? Will I ever get through this? How in the world will I ever get through this illness? How in the world will I ever get through this problem? How in the world will I ever get through this situation? It seems hopeless when we first look at it. And you sit there and you worry and you fret. And it looks worse and worse. And it's constantly on your mind. And it torments you. Look at verse 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. So here we are in the middle of the storm. It's hopeless. We're worrying ourselves to death. But here comes Jesus, folks. They didn't recognize him at first. They almost missed him. They thought he was another problem on top of that. They thought he was a ghost or a spirit. Now I wonder, if we can be honest, how many times we thought about in our time of trouble or when problems arise and we go to church with that help. Sometimes people say, oh, that's even more problems. How many times have we avoided God thinking that He would, he would judge us or punish us for where we have put ourselves? We've caused the problem. Well, maybe we have. Friends, I want to say that God knows exactly where you are and how you got there is not really the problem. He's simply waiting on, waiting on you to stop trying your way to fix it. Call on Him. Call on Him and rest in the peace that He's given you from the start. He's already given you that peace and say, Lord, I need your help. I need your help. Just ask Him. He knows where you are. He knows the trouble you're in. He knows exactly what you're going through. Just ask Him. Jesus will get you through your storm. And see you safely to the other side. Now up until this point I've been talking mainly to Christians. But I want to say this. Unless you're a Christian you cannot know that peace. You cannot get God's ear when it comes to the middle of the storm or when it comes to the storm. Unless you have salvation and the best thing that you can do in this life is to invest in the next life 
Everyone's soul is going to exist for eternity. That's what the Bible teaches. We can't change that. And the most important question that you will ever have to answer is this. Where will you spend eternity? Do you know Jesus Christ personally? Have you ever surrendered your life to Him? And everyone in this room falls into one of two categories. And you must be honest with yourself and honest with God. Are you lost? Or are you saved? And there's only one answer. You can't say, I don't know, because if you don't know, then it's an absolute surety you're lost without the promise of anything. If you're saved today, we praise the Lord with you. I praise the Lord for you. But if you're lost today without a Savior to lean on, then today you must look at that situation very seriously. And I mean very seriously. If that's the case, then there's nothing to do other than to come to Him. Jesus stands waiting today. I'm going to ask our musicians to come. There's a verse in John chapter 3 and 18. says, He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Let us pray this morning. Father, I pause and I just praise your name. Father, we thank you that you are a, a great father. Your grace and your mercy. I thank you, Father, that at the time of salvation, you do give us peace. And it's a peace that is not of this world. It's a peace that only the Christian can know about. Father, I pray for the lost ones today. I pray that they would come. I pray that the Holy Spirit would compel them to come to this very altar today and that they would surrender to you. I pray these things in Jesus' holy name. With every head bowed for just a moment.